Oh, you came back. <laughs> Welcome back to Open Studio. I'm Steve Leahy. Here we are. We're headlighting. All right. Now, last week we um, started really kind of getting into the nitty gritty on this this uh, headlamp. So we're going to keep going with that. I've got this kind of a darkish bluish gray. And that's what I'm using to kind of start to flesh out these um, darker areas in this in, in this headlight what basically what's being reflected so I'm just kind of put putting these in now I, I said it last week these are um, these are not as dark as they're going to be in the end so it's really nice for me to be able to just freely work on these details and just kind of keep leaning back and checking them out and making sure they're going in the right spot if they're not it's no big deal because all the stuff around this is going to ultimately be this same value. So it's really the darker areas that's going to kind of replace what I'm doing right now. But again, what's nice is it really lets me, even though this is a super tight area to be working in, it, this really lets me work almost kind of really loosely. And I don't have to worry about, you know, oh, that wasn't exactly in the right spot where if I nailed it with the exact color that it is, that darkest color, it would have to be in the exact spot that it needs to be in or else I'd have to fix it. So again, this is just a really nice way to kind of be able to sketch and not, you know, not be totally committed to exactly having everything perfect. I can really work it, work it around. And that goes, you know, it's, it's interesting because again, I, I love it when people look at the paintings at the end and uh, comment on on you know, the the the, uh, the the technical nature of them, and you know it's funny when I get the comments that you know oh you, you know it's, your work is too tight you know I, I I personally like art to be more free and loose, and what's interesting is is this from what you're seeing that's exactly what this is this is me just kind of really loosely painting i mean it's yes it's on a micro small scale and that's what gives it its overall kind of um, relentless detail type tightness but it's really for me it's not it's not that at all it's just that like i said this is this is as it's just loose it's just me kind of sketching things in so again, it boils down to you know your your perspective and your understanding of the technique that's involved with doing whatever you're looking at, um, and that's the fun part about it. I love my favorite question, and it seems very simple, but it's usually very involved. When when I catch an artist uh, near a painting or a piece of art that that I really admire, and I get to say, "How did you do that?" I mean, it seems like a real simple question, but again. It could be completely loaded because it could have taken that person all kinds of effort to get their art where it is at that moment. I love it, especially when I don't understand. Like when I don't get it, it's, it makes me even happier. It's like, oh, you know, tell me how you did that. I, I, I need to know. And that's the beauty of looking at other people's art too. Even if it's something that you're never going to do as an artist, you can still apply so much of what is going on in that piece to what you are doing. It's, for instance, if you see some piece of art from someone and, you know, technically it has something going on with it that, that you can't wrap your head around, just the fact that you get the explanation on what was involved in that and you can see someone's dedication and tenacity to that project, to that vision that they had, how can that not inspire you you know what I mean so even if you're not going to do the same type of work sculpture or, or or digital art or whatever it is you know something different than what you're doing you could still take away that that passion and that and that dedication and that just a technical ability and then if if you're really lucky you will get something out of it that you can directly apply you'll see something whether it's uh, the, the development of an idea from, from where it started or, or some sort of tool that they use that you could then apply to what you're doing even though they're working in a completely different discipline. It's, it's really just about keeping your head open and uh, especially if you don't get it or especially if you don't like it. <laughs> That's even more so. 
So it's it's all about, I don't know, for me it's all about getting that information out of, you know, the, the other creatives. And if it's so out of line, it's even better because finding a way to, to connect it with what I'm doing is going to create something totally new. All right. I'm talking a lot because this is a lot of rinse and repeat. So it's that same medium darkish blue and I'm just kind of painting in those long rectangles that make up the, the lens of this. Okay. Where are we at now? We're ready to take it up a notch, I think. One more layer of darkness. What I think I might do first, though, is I'm going to grab some of these. Last week we did that brown and the green. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of of that that same color, or, e or each one of them. So I'll start with the brown, but this time I'll add a little bit of white to it to kind of lighten it up a little bit because this is going to be pretty bold. So what I'm going to do is where I did the, the brown color, I can kind of add more intense a more intense like kind of version of that in just really tight detailed areas like like along those those lens lines that are in here so I've got the really delicate fog of that brown here so now I'm just kind of adding a little bit of punch with that same brown color or no actually it's not the same brown color but what's interesting is because it's you know, would put being put on with a paintbrush, um, it it seems a lot darker and more bold. Even though the original color in the airbrush had no white in it and was very dark compared to this, but because of the application, because of the paintbrush and the way that it puts the paint on in a much, I don't know, in a much more um, stronger layer, that then you know it it looks different. So again, I just want to kind of indicate it to kind of give it a little bit of punch. And I'm going to do the same thing with the green. What's nice about the green is last week, remember, I hit this and it had some white in it. So that's why this is super bright and this is really the color I wanted it. So this, um, oh, I need some on the palette. I said I need some on the palette. So this uh, paintbrush work will help break that up, you know. All right, so we'll drop a bit of this green out. I'll put it out near the yellow, the yellow ochre up at the top here. Uh, because more than likely I'll end up mixing it with yellow more than any of the other colors. Uh, so, All right, so this is same deal here. That green that I just mixed up is really, really intense. It needs to be knocked down a bit for the paintbrush. For the airbrush, not so much because I control the, uh, the application of that a lot easier with the airbrush than I can with the paintbrush. So adding a little bit of white to that just kind of helps knock that back so I'm not dealing with this super, super bright green. And then I can use it to just kind of break this one up and also to add those, again, those really, really tight, tight detail lines in this one over here. That's good, okay. Subconsciously, as I'm working on this, I kind of keep track in my head, airbrush versus, versus paintbrush. I like to try to push for a 50-50 kind of thing. It doesn't mean it has to be 50-50. Sometimes something needs to be 80% airbrushed and only 20% paintbrush. But if I find, even in that instance, if I find I'm doing one more than the other, like a lot more than the other, then I try to like say, okay, I've done a lot of paintbrush work. Now I got to find a way to put some airbrushing in. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, I've done a bunch of the paintbrush work on the last episode and a bunch more on this one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the darker gray, a little bit darker gray, and I'm going to start airbrushing over, over this thing. This time, and since the last episode, when I said I needed to clean out my airbrush. I have not done that yet, so <laughs> we're going to switch airbrushes here so we don't have to worry about too much of that. So let me mix up a gray. So we'll do some white. This time I'm going to be a good doobie and not mix over the painting because last time with the green I nearly put a big blob of green on that and that would have made me sad. So I've got the I've got a few drops of white 
and one drop of black. I know those out of focus, but you get the idea. And then I'm going to add some reducer to this and some 40-50. That's that milky color in there, too. So what that does is it'll give me a, this, the white and black are naturally opaque. This will just kind of loosen it up a little bit and give me a little bit more control over it and also make it a little bit more transparent, which is what we want. So there it is. Pretty light, right? Light gray. But again, when it kind of condenses on the surface, it's going to feel a lot darker than what I just showed you. It might not, too. I might have to darken it up, but I always err on the side of you know, making it too light because for me it's just, I don't know if it's just psychological, but it's easier to darken it for me than it is to lighten it. So I'll try this in a, again, same thing as the paintbrush. I'm going to try this in a spot that's got a lot of really dark areas in it. And if it works, then I'm good. If not, then I can mess with it. It's so far too light. I just want to make sure I'm getting that color through or that value. So since it's really coming out too light, I can try this on a lighter area just to make sure I'm going to get what I need out of this. Uh, I don't know. Oh, you know what I can do with this? I know what I'll do with this. Since it's still not, I'm not quite sure if it's where I need it to be. I'm going to knock out some of this green that kind of was too green when it popped out with the white. So this grayish color will kind of neutralize that brilliant green that was up on the top. Yeah, I think it's too light. Yeah, it is too light. So I'm going to add a little bit of, a little bit of black to it. So I want this, I want this like one step darker than the, the gray I just used with the paintbrush. And the nice thing about this, too, is that gray that I use with the paintbrush, um, remember it has that blue in it, that steel blue color. This has none of that. So this is a different gray as well. So this is going to kind of add one more layer, you know, one more texture, one more value layer to this painting that wasn't there before. Yes, much better. Much better. All right, so this, again, I'm not... I'm keeping it pretty tight, or very tight, but I'm not keeping it so tight that I'm trying to mimic what the paintbrush did. I don't want that. I want this to be kind of a softer, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm still right on this thing. I'm still doing really, really tight areas, but again, it's not as tight as what the paintbrush did. So it's a nice blend. It, it just kind of takes the edge off the paintbrush while still leaving that super tight edge that the paintbrush can do but yet this allows me to kind of float in some darker colors in the same rough area without losing all the detail that I just put in. If I had a big fat brush you know and I just hose this thing down then I'd lose everything I just did with the paintbrush and that's no good. This color uh, with well, this stage I can also reinforce all those uh, vertical lines you can see the longer the more I push this the more those that vertical and then those hearts few horizontal lines will pop out again the end of the day they they show they show up as um, they really show up because of the highlights that are on them those lines uh, but again that's the last step I got to make sure I have the foundation of them done from the start. And again, while I'm picking at all this, I just want to thank everyone again. Um, the channel has grown. It just, it's just been growing and growing. And um, I just want to, again, just thank everyone if, just, just for being here for, for everything, for, for telling someone you know. Again, I mentioned it last week. It shows, you know, I, I, I get to follow the analytics of the station and or the channel. And uh, and when you guys spread the word, it just it has its effect. And, and I just really, really want to thank you all. It's uh, 
it's so much fun doing this. It's so much fun being able to share this and not just kind of working in a bubble. Um, yeah, I want to keep doing it. And you guys are, are the reason why that's happening. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. What's nice about this is this is feeling very brown to me as I'm spraying this. And there is no brown in it. It's black and white. But the opaque black from Createx has a really warm, I keep saying it because I'm super excited that they did it this way. Their opaque black has a very brownish feel to it, um, which is great because that's the kind of black that I, I tend to gravitate to. I like a warmer black over a cool, cooler black and, um, and Createx have, have kind of, kind of just did that for me. So, um, so it's nice when you add white to it and kind of use it in a context like this, it has a really brownish feel to it. And uh, I really like that. All right, so there are, I'm gonna, there's like a swooping kind of reflection that's in the bottom of this. So I'm gonna kind of indicate that real quick while I'm just kind of hanging out. And I'll tighten that up after too. Same thing with these the highlight here or the reflection here is a little bit tighter than that. These are going to get a lot of really nice darks on top over here. So again, the idea behind these grays and these lighter tones is this gives those really dark darks and the really light highlights something to stand on in the end. I wouldn't want to put like a really dark detail in this just out of the out of the gate because it would look First of all, it would look very transparent, even though it's a really, you know, deep dark. But then second, it would just look really simple. It would, it would just be black, you know. But this will have steel blue underneath it, a little bit of this brownish black, and then that really tight black detail. And that's really what's going to kind of make this thing work. Then there's airbrush cheats at the end, which I'll show you. So. A little sneak preview of the airbrush cheats when um, when light really is glowing on something like it's really reflecting hard and creates that glow that kind of sunspot you know glow thing on, on something that's reflective the airbrush does a really really good job at that um, so when I go to put in those last really bright highlights especially down in here on the bottom part of this lens by just backing off with the airbrush and letting that kind of be fuzzy around the outside, you'll see it'll make this whole thing just light up like it's like it's real. Plus, there are um, lights from the show, the, like the ceiling, that are reflecting in this as well. And those little things really go a long way in describing what's going on with this thing. So um, it all does come together. It all does come together. Lovely, 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 lovely. Okay, so we're gonna do this again, but this time I'm gonna add a little bit of the blue to it. So this is my my dark gray, or my, no, I shouldn't say that. It's not really my dark gray, it's just gray. But I'm gonna add a little bit more black to it to darken it up. But then what I'm gonna do, do I have any on here that's wet enough? Probably not. Um, I'm gonna grab some opaque blue. I really, I like the opaque phthalo blue from Createx. It's got some green in it, like a good Thalo does, um, but it's, it's, it's a good overall blue. So I'm going to, oh, I already had some out. What do you know? <clears throat> Drop that up there. And then I'm going to take a, just a tiny, tiny bit of this. Like I'm just, it's a wet brush. There we go. So what I'm going to do is actually I'll show you on this camera because it's closer. So I'm going to take just, actually, I'll get the paint. How about that? And then you can actually see it. I'm just going to let the, just the bristles uh, pick up just the tiniest bit of that stuff. And I'm going to mix that in here. And what that'll do is that blue will then cancel the warmth of, of the gray that's in there. I think I need to do it again with a little bit more. And again, it's much easier to, to, um, add blue than to try to take blue away. So there's another similar little corner of the paintbrush with the blue on it. 
see if we have a winner yet. Well, we're going to try that, see what it looks like. Now, again, when you do that, when you adjust the color that's in the airbrush, it's important to remember that the paint from here all the way out to the tip, which is a considerable amount of paint, is still the original color that I was just using. So what I have to do is I have to get all that back up into the cup. And a real simple way to do that is you take a, a, a cloth and you very gently cover the end of the airbrush. You don't want to bend the needle or anything. And then once you have the, essentially what you're doing is you're stopping the air from coming out of the front of the brush. And then when I pull the trigger back very gently, you can see the bubbles appearing. So that's the air being forced back into the cup instead of being ejected out of the front of the airbrush. So the nice thing about that is it takes the paint that's in the front of the brush from here to here, and it also pushes that back up into the cup. So it's a neat way to kind of, uh, well, it's a great way to kind of back flush your airbrush if you're cleaning it out, but it's also a great way to quickly mix paint that's in your cup. So I'm doing this off to the side because obviously <laughs> it's a dangerous thing again to do over your painting because you'll end up uh, blowing bubbles all over your, your shiny painting and we do not want that. All right, darker gray. So I'm going to start this one. I'm going to start on the upper side and this is just going to be a real general spray. So what I'm looking to do is start to lower the values across the board on this where they need to be lowered. But I'm doing this really slowly and really transparently, again, because I want to be able to pull in some details and still be able to see what I'm doing. You know, I don't want to just hose this down and cover everything up that I just did. This is also a great color to neutralize a little bit more of that green. And this hopefully shows you in that spot of green that kind of blasted out that I wasn't, you know, really prepared for there. If it happens early enough in the painting or in the part you're working on, then you have a lot of chance to correct that. If it happened at the very end, then it's a repair. But in this stage, it's going to be buried under so much other stuff. I really, really wasn't worried about it. Same thing with this side. This side is looking a little bit too bright, that green. So I can use this darker color to just kind of tone it down a little bit and see if I can reel it in, essentially. And again, because I didn't do the outside edge of this, I didn't finish up the, the frame of this light, the, you know, the, the housing essentially, I can just run this color right over the edge because I know I'm going to be repainting that dark brown edge. And this middle section where the, the, uh, whatever that lens is in the middle. Um, the paintbrush strokes, you know, kind of streaky right there. So I can go in here and with the, with this color and just really lightly go over it and just kind of smooth them out. Again, I don't want them like crazy, like super, super smooth. I just want to kind of take that streakiness out of it that, that wasn't intended. And this section down here looks pretty good. I mean, it's, it's really bright down on this bottom half because of the way the light is reflecting. Uh, so I don't have to do too much with that. It's mostly on this top side. And it's not really surprising that, you know, I started this, really started this lens last week. And we're here now spending this whole episode on this lens again. This, honestly, this, this whole lens, the, the glass part of it, really should take me about two hours, which is about four episodes. Um, but what's nice is each one of those episodes is, is, is a different part of it. Like by the last one, it's fun because it's all the really bright highlights and those, those lens, you know, that airbrush flare that I was talking about that really makes things look like they're actually glowing. You know, that's what happens in the last um, the last kind of episode of the headlight, essentially. So um, it will be fun.
but I'm really, really happy with this. I'm really happy. I'm going to um, tilt this one before the end because you guys have been looking at it at an angle because just the way the camera works, I'm, I'm really up close or you guys are up close too with me. So I have to, I have, to have the camera at a kind of a strong angle. Um, so before I finish, I will, I will back it up a little bit and show you the whole headlight where it's at at the correct angle. So now what I can do with this, I've been kind of being general with it, but I can get pretty tight with this too. Again, I don't want to, I want to bridge the gap. I want to come somewhere close to what the paintbrush will do, but I also don't want this to try to be the paintbrush. Uh, I can, I can do that with the paintbrush. So. But again, if I get really, really close to what a paintbrush can do and or even overlap what a paintbrush can do and then use the paintbrush, um, then then that that transition between tools is invisible. If there's a gap between there, if I can only take the airbrush to a certain tightness and then have to, you know, try to pick it up where the with, with the uh, paintbrush, you'll see that gap in technique. And that's that's what bugs me. Oh, a little bit too much paint on that, but it worked out okay. I'll fix that with highlights. We talked about patience last week and kind of getting through things. I think the big payoff for being patient with something is when you're done with that. And you, it's the same thing like I used the jigsaw puzzle in, in last, last week as an analogy. It's the same thing. So you've spent all that time, you spent all those hours putting the jigsaw puzzle together and hunting down parts. And at the very end, when you put that last piece in, that, that, that joy that you get, that, that sense of accomplishment, you wouldn't have got if there were only five pieces in the puzzle. And you just put them together in 10 seconds and you were done. If it takes you hours and hours in that very last piece, you put that in there. And I think most people can relate to this because everyone has done something that's something that's really long term and challenging. And then you get that last little bit done and then you see what you did. That's what these paintings are like for me. Like when I look at how much time I spent on one area, yet it's just one little part of this whole bigger thing. It's just I mean, I'm, I have a difficult time explaining it to people. Plus, I actually enjoy when people think I'm legitimately nuts for doing stuff like this or working small or whatever it is. I, I do really like that because really they're not wrong. So there's that. This is, this is yeah, it's is making me happy. This is coming out good. Yep. All right. So again, like we talked about, you know, if I spend too much time airbrushing, I take a break and then say, okay, well, I must be close to paintbrush area. And I am. So now I'm going to start kind of tucking in some of these really darker details. We are getting close on this one. So I'm going to do a few of these and then we'll pick up those details where, where we left off on the next episode. Um, same thing, a little bit of brown, a little bit of black. That seems to be the predominant overall shade for this. Come up with a dark gray. And then the darkest details are right next to, right next to this. So you get the idea. What I'm actually, what I'm going to do, uh, this is better. I'm not going to get into this. I will um, start with this on the next episode so we can just keep going. I don't want to do one little tiny bit of that and then have to stop so it seems like a good breaking point because we are trying to keep these to a half an hour so that you know you can kind of ingest these in a good way <laughs> i guess so let me tilt it a little bit so you get the actual color but you see how it's really starting to come together it's really got that feeling of you know a lot of reflections in there now the other thing too is as you step back from this it blends all together and just looks like a headlight and that's what i really want I don't want people to look at that and say, look at all the work he did on that headlight. I want people to just say, headlight, 
you know? If people want to then get closer and really kind of dig into it, then that's great. That's fine. But it's all about getting it to look like what it's supposed to look like. And uh, we're getting there now. We're getting there. So you'll be surprised when we put in those darker details and then those, you know, white highlights and flares, uh, the thing will come together really fast. All righty. That's what I got. All right. So thanks for dropping by Open Studio again. I appreciate it. Uh, if you are would be so kind as to click the like on that, it really does help things along. And um, if you know anyone who'd be interested in what we're what we're doing, please pass it on. That'd be great. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. And hit that let subscribe button as well. You'll get any of the pop up videos that come up. So that's it. So for Steve Leahy and Open Studio, thank you again. I love you all, and I will catch you guys and girls on the next one. Take care.